David Ayer, just to answer your question, um, currency-wise, we're still trading in the September contracts. With regards to the gold market, however, we are trading in the December contract. Um, so yes, like I said, all eyes this morning. Um, as I mentioned in the morning stream, uh, it was all about gold. It was all about gold filling in that gap. Um, you know, we have since seen, obviously, that gold is, uh, has provided uh, a little bit of an opportunity off of the $39, $40, and uh, we're currently trading 36 and a half on screen. So it is pretty much about gold filling that gap. Uh, obviously, we've, we had the lead on the uh, the DAX this morning, as again I mentioned, you know, watch the DAX, it was leading, uh, probably also a likely candidate to fill in the gap first, like it did last week. Okay, this is the, this is the interesting thing was, the equities last week were the, uh, were the market that led the risk on, they were the market that led uh, ultimately filling the gaps. Okay, what are we gonna do today? Um, I'm gonna show you two little things. One, I'm gonna show you a little setup in the DAX. Um, and then talk a little bit about the gold execution, uh, about how you can execute it, um, and hopefully we get a bit of activity. As you can see, obviously the gold's not going straight for that gap, uh, so it's likely to trundle on down lower over the course of the day. So that that's yeah, that's important to understand because a lot of people are probably sitting there, maybe short, holding it. Uh, whereas for me, I've identified, you know, if you look at a footprint, which we'll do in a minute, um, there's a large buyer in this gold just sitting absorbing it all the way down. Okay, so because of the nature of the price action, it's unlikely gold's going to have an aggressive down move. Right? So what I'm trying to do is rather than sell and hold, I'm actually looking to sell, and every time it takes the low, and we see that absorption, I'm looking to cover. And then when it goes bid again, sell into it, and then when it takes a new loan, absorbs cover. So I'm kind of playing the price action that the screen is showing me as opposed to uh, what I want to see, and that's important. Okay, obviously, I'd love it if it went straight line, but it doesn't seem like it's going to do that. Right. Don't forget, obviously, we have got a key level uh, at 31.9 or $32. Keep an eye on that. Uh, you know, if you look on the screen, uh, Johnny, if you have got, just keep your focus point right in the middle of the screen. Um, those are the three markets you want to pay attention to. As you can see, uh, down in that little area, I have got bids uh, already working yes. for that key little, key little area. Okay. So let's start, let's just talk a little bit about this DAX off the open. Okay, so if we can look at this chart on the, the right side of my screen. Um, there's a five minute chart. Now, I'm going to show you a very unique little pattern. And you see this across markets, not just, uh, you know, not just the DAX. Okay, you see it in any market, you also see it across multiple time frames. So what we've got here is ever since the cash open, Right. indicated by this line at 8 o'clock. You can obviously see that the DAX has effectively failed to take out the previous candles low and close below the previous candles low. Okay, we did that for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 candles. Note then, the first time we did close below it, we are now not necessarily selling off. Okay. We're now just seeing a little bit of profit take and like a little bit more two-way trade. Okay, so first thing to understand, if you were long on this, right, this is the kind of price response, this is the kind of strong price action that you want to stay long until the market gives you that candle close. Equally, if you're looking for a short, this is definitely not something you want to fade until you get that candle close. Lastly, if you do want a short, let the market do the close, and then instead of being aggressively shorter, when you get these sort of straight line move up, Okay, you don't necessarily want to be an aggressive short, so you don't want to sell this on the way down. What you want to do is let the market come back in and around that sell out, that selling area, around the 77s to 80s, and then look to sell. Okay, and that's what you're going to see me do now. You're going to look me. You're going to let. Me, you're going to see me actually try and buy this market initially, and then you're going to see me try and sell the market higher. Okay, so I'm willing to play both sides of the range. First up, I'm looking around somewhere around the uh, 56 area. Okay, so that's me just explaining to you what I'm going to do in the DAX. Again, um, if we come up to the uh, footprint chart, so if you come up to my charts on the left, Johnny. Okay, so we can see obviously the DAX this morning, the initiative came around that 1245 area. Right? Note that 1245 area also happens to just coincide with the break of yesterday's high. Okay, so we can see somewhere around that 1240 was yesterday's high and we've retested and held that high. So straight away, we've got an important pivot there. 1240 or 140, whatever you want to call it, 12, 140, I'll just call it 40s. Okay, that's the key. Uh, that's the key little area in the DAX this morning. 
Yeah. So long as it holds there, uh, last week's high could potentially be tested. Okay, so that's another little pivot. We're looking at eight and nine and a half. Keep an eye on that if we do get up there. Um, again, obviously, as most of you follow on, put a nice fat pink line there. Okay. That's the landscape. We've drawn the landscape now. We've we've got a nice fat red line at 40s. Okay. We identify that as a key where you know we saw the initiative come in from the buyers. So we make a nice little turquoise line for that. We then obviously have our purple line or our, our, our pink line for obviously our weekly high. And then we have the key breakdown below 73 and a half as a red line. Okay. So straight away we're looking at a chart now, just with lines. And this is this is why I love different color lines. Okay. We we set in context through colorful lines. Right. I don't need to, you know, I can, I can focus on, on the gold, I can focus on the euro, you know, I don't need to think a great deal um, whilst trading now because, uh, you know, I know what I'm trying to employ in the DAX and, uh, you know, I can just execute when I get to certain price points uh, that I'm interested in trading. Okay. So we got some bids down at 58, 57 and a half in the DAX. Um, again, we're going to have a look at the reaction there. See how the market responds down there, and um, hopefully get our longs away. And uh, just again, try and target a retest at 73 and a half. So we're kind of looking back up to 72, 72 and a half somewhere around there, <coughs> just for a little bit of a retest. Okay, that breakdown point, it didn't come with a great deal of volume, more a little bit of profit taking rather than selling. Okay. Other than that, guys. Um, in uh, roughly five minutes time, I'm going to move into the uh, sterling. As I said this morning, we have got the PMIs around 9.30. Um, again, like I said, it's probably going to take quite a, a big miss or a beat in the number to get me involved in the, the cable this morning. Um, it is a little bit of a, a not so pretty looking market, but there is some work to be done, I think, in the cable, and that's kind of why I want to pay attention to it. There's some good um, downside potential if um, if and only if obviously the um, you know the number does come out of line. Um, so let's just watch a little bit. Watch on your screens. Keep an eye on gold, euro, and the, the DAX. If the German finance ministry concludes the goals that lead the German finance ministry yeah. ahead and so European institutions, there could be two eventual base cases. A harder tone for the periphery and the FDP contained or enter the German finance okay. ministry. Johnny, sorry, if you know if you're still on uh, the footprint there, uh, just come down to the charts for now and just sit on. Uh, not on the charts, sorry, just come down to the um, to the ladders, please. In 2019, would decline in order to safeguard a balanced representation across European institutions, and that could therefore imply a softer policy rate of globalization and lower euro than with Absolutely happening now. See what I mean? Yeah. So down there, see, it's identical with the end of the last. That's the same move. You see? And now how we've come back up from the 1st of September. This is the first September. It's the same as the 10th Okay, obviously, um, traditionally, you'll know, obviously, a lot of us do trade German bonds and euro stocks 50 and uh, you can see they're not even up on my screen um, for good reason <laughs> buttons, are, uh, buttons are rolling which means the price action is um, very difficult to interpret uh, technically the market's going to do whatever it needs to do um, so that's going to make it equally difficult to trade um, so there's just just a lack of interest on my part to trade buttons I have no interest okay. it's so important I know Back in the day, okay, you might have read about guys who only trade one market and they're very successful, and that, that's fair enough. Um, but for me, in this day and age, you, you've got to apply yourself uh, according to where the opportunity is. And right now, the potential or the probability of, of, of good opportunity in the German Bunds over the course of the next two, three, four sessions, uh, for me, that's diminished. Okay, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but it's diminished. And for that very reason, um, I choose to focus my attention this way. Right, if you uh, look in my diary this morning, or well not my diary, but my trading logbook, um, 
you know, what I do actually before I get to the trading floor um, so that I don't get the inertia of wanting to jump into markets is I actually identify the markets I want to trade in. And you can see, yes, of course I've got other ladders up, but you know, any other trading that I do besides these three ladders in the gold, the euro and the DAX, it's all reactionary trading. Okay, I'm reacting, maybe I've seen something. Uh, but more often than not, that reactionary trading is not something I've thought about. Okay, so what I mean by that, think about it, if, if everything we preach as, as Axia, if everything you, know, you hear me say is about preparation, planning, um, you know, then ultimately, if I've prepped myself on these three markets, any other trade I do, you know, my edge is slightly diminished. Okay, that's important to understand. You know, every trade I'm executing now, I've thought about. It. Not just in terms of execution, but in terms of risk, in terms of trade location, in terms of market conditioning. I've thought about it. And that's why in the morning when, uh, when I get up nice and bright and early and I'm doing my little bit of meditation, I try and write down what is it, where are my focus points today? Okay, because one of the cliche sayings in, uh, in trading, and I absolutely love it, I don't think it's cliche at all, is one good trade. Okay, you only need to execute one good trade a day to have a good day. And I mean that, you only need to execute one good trade or one flawless trade to make good money on a day. You don't need to do 10 trades a day. Okay, but you have to identify that one good trade. You have to be present in the moment. You have to have all the skills to, to take on that opportunity and then you ultimately have to execute it. Um, so that's crucial to understand. That's why I don't have a bund up or a Eurostoxx 50. Just no interest. Okay. So we can see that DAX uh, is found a bit. And what I said to you, the two-way trade. Okay, so we're getting that two-way trade now. The important thing to understand is obviously where we've bounced from. So if we again we look at that chart, we can see between the area of 40 and 60, we've got what we call a traditional low volume area, untraded area. Market's not auctioning within this area. Okay, so it seems like the market's starting to, again, some might call this a little bit of a flag, but what we're seeing now is just a little bit sideways distribution. Okay, keep in mind, last week's high, 89.5. We're going to focus on that high. Why? If it breaks and starts to get aggressive, okay, we might get on it. If it breaks and fails, we know we've seen consolidation. We know we saw profit taking up here at the last time at 86s. We'll be looking for a shorter target back in and around those 61s again. Okay, so again, I'm not reacting when I trade the DAX. When I move across into the DAX, I'm not reacting. Okay, it's thought out. It's analysis. It's everything I've done this morning pre-open trade. I'm merely just sitting here now doing my job, which is executing according to where price moves. Okay, and that's so crucial to understand, guys. A lot of you, you, you uh, you'll have one strategy, and um, you'll apply that strategy, and then you get bored, and then suddenly you become reactionary. Okay, so important. Try and always think about things in advance. Try and prepare your things in advance. Try and prepare your understanding, your interpretation in advance. Because guess what? When things get manic, all right, when you're well prepared, when there's non-farm payrolls and suddenly you know, your key trades come into play, you don't have to think. Okay? You don't have to react like 90% of most traders will react. Why? Because you've thought it out. You've got the plan in your head. You know what to do. Okay. Let's start preparing for this number. Write these numbers down, boys. Expected 53.5. Johnny, you can come up to the right just for me, please. Okay, 53.5. If you were on this morning's stream, you would have noticed the low of the year 53.3. Okay, now let's have a look at these estimates. So the minimum estimate's 52, maximum 54.1. Right. So we actually have got a few estimates sitting in and around below that low of the year. Okay, now, what do you want to pay attention to? If you look at this grid up on the top left here, what's the dollar doing on the day? Okay, so euro is down against the dollar. Pound, down against the dollar. Um, US dollar is down against the yen, for obvious reasons, risk off. CAD, okay, down against the dollar. Um, I see dollar fraction up, New Zealand dollar up. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a mixed bag. But in general, it looks as though we're seeing a little bit of dollar strength over the last hour or so in the in the, um, in the dollar space. A little bit of strength. Not, I don't want to call it strength. Just call it a little bit of a bid. Okay. So we're going to work with that understanding. Now, OK. 
he is. Anything below 53 is. Okay, that's all we're looking for. So I've marked on my piece of paper. Anything less than 53? Okay, has the potential. Right. 52 or below? Or even, I mean, I suppose the best place to start is uh, at 50 and below. Um, and, um, uh, you know, if, if we get a number below 50, okay, contractionary, it's the first time in years, you know, it'll, it'll roil the newspaper headlines, uh, it'll, it'll really get the markets moving. So below 50 is a ma massive, massive miss. Um, and that's kind of where we're going to pay our attention, below the 50s. Um, okay, so if I can just quickly... Sorry, guys, I'm just uh, trying to... I don't want to be trading the stacks right now, so I'm just trying to get out of a trade here. Um, all attention. Again, this is something that, that's always tricky. Obviously, when you trade multiple markets, you've got to... Uh, You've got to acknowledge that um, your attention's got to go where, where you've got the best opportunity. Okay, so I'm clearing out of the DAX now. Um, obviously, I'll keep that level in the uh, gold that I'm interested in. But uh, for all intents and purposes now, I'm, um, I've got the sterling chart up. Okay, so let's come back down to the ladder, Johnny. And uh, we can start preparing this uh, chart. Okay. So what you got in front of you is the 30 minute, 30 minute uh, sterling, and um, again, like I said, outlier 52 or below, 50 below. I mean, I'm just gonna you're gonna see me be very aggressive 50 below for obvious reasons. Anything below 52, I'm happy to be aggressively short as well. Anything on 53, I'm gonna be cautious selling into the lows. Okay, uh, there's not a great deal going on, but where I'm particularly interested in is this area of of uh, 17s down to 11s. Okay, it's just below today's current low. Why? Because it coincides with the inside day breaks. Okay. So ideally what I want to see is a really, really weak number here, something I can sell into um, and uh, get short this cable. Okay. So let's get focused on in here. Let's zone in into this number. By the way, guys, if you have got any questions, um, I see we've got quite a few new members today, so welcome, guys. Hopefully you're enjoying <laughs> this. Welcome back from the summer. Um, if you've got any questions, I will answer them towards the end of the stream. So just keep them down, let them down, anything sort of uh, you want to ask. And save us for a little later. Okay. Which is approaching that weekly high at nine and a half. So we have got an eye on that. Any failure above eight nine and a half, so we're going to look for short side trades back down to 60s. So that's the one play we've got. Obviously, we've got that gold in play as well. So let's keep an eye on this. Nine seconds now, so we see the release of services PMI for August. Consensus 53.5. seconds so we see the release of UK services pay mine.
53.2, 53.2, that's short, the 53.5 expected, also lying at quite 53.8. PMI suggests Q3 GDP growth of 0.3% quarter on quarter, momentum being lost, that's according to IHS markets, Williams. There was a sharp decrease in average cost burdens and services in the company. services like hiring component, component, sorry, going to get here, and 19 month high. Composite reading of the 53.8 is a low since as well. Yeah, guys, that's the stuff you want to pay attention to, you know. We've taken out yesterday's low at uh, 16s, and um, not just the lack of energy. I know it looks like it's blipping up. doesn't necessarily mean it's a buy. It's just you know, a lot of people have sold. Um, a lot of people have gone short on that number. And <laughs> yeah, for good reason. You know, you'd think there'd be a bit of stops below the 11s. Um, so the minute we can't take it out, you know, guess what? Okay, so that's the DAX. So 89 and a half, so that's our key little level in the DAX. We're going to pay attention to that now. We're going to look for any kind of failure there. Um, remember, guys, it's only failure once it confirms the failed break, yeah, so let's not preempt this too much. Okay, unfortunately, we're going to fill the 61s. It would have been a nice, well, a little bit lower than 61s. It would have been a nice fill, but um, alas. Okay. So we're going to keep a little eye on this cable. We can see markets come straight back bid. We're going to escape that trade now. Obviously not ready to take that trade yet. So what we are going to do, okay, you can see now, if you look at how this, um, how this cable responded. Okay, number came in pretty much line. Uh, wasn't too keen on being too aggressive. The reason I went short, very simply, uh, key little level down there at 11s, okay? So net and net, we've done nothing, no harm. We we're on a trade. If it worked well, we probably would have got you know, 20, 25 pips, a little bit of follow through. Uh, didn't work out so well. Uh, net result, we didn't lose much. Okay. Um, so, the important thing now is we can see that obviously a lot of people got short down on the, uh, the breakdown. Okay. If we have a second crack at that low now, okay, so if we go back down towards that low in the cable, Right, you're going to see me use a stop limit entry for this. Why? Because a lot of people got short there the first time, they're now stopped out. Okay, which means if we go back there a second time, there's a higher probability that we're likely to take out that area. Again, the important thing to assess when we get back down there is the price action. So we want to see the price response. So again, we're going to have to keep it tight. Okay, so if I go you know, two or three prices or so, you're going to see me bail out of that trade very, very quickly. Pity because we would have been liking to pray for that break in the DAX, but unfortunately, uh, you can only have so many markets on uh, at any given moment. So, we've missed a trick in the DAX this morning, which sucks a little bit, but again, it's, pr it's, it's priorities. Okay, um, it's all about priorities. Right, for those of you just wondering, if you didn't hear the PMI number of the UK, um, number was 53.2. So. Uh, pretty much the lowest of the year uh, that we've seen in services PMI. Um, you know, something something to bank into your future memories. You know, if uh, when we get below that 50, okay, it'll be the first time in years. Uh, it'll royal the pound market. So just think about that in the end. This is this is something that's so crazy. Imagine I said to you that at some point in the next three months we could get a number below 50 and that cable could drop 100 ticks on that. Imagine, imagine being armoured with that piece of information. I think you know, you'd, you'd start to think that, you know, well, hang on a sec, actually, that's an opportunity that will come at some point in this year and that could pay for my, you know, my licence fees for charting for the entire year. Okay, so that's how you've got to think of these opportunities. Um, yeah, that was a, a number that didn't move. Okay, non-farm payrolls. Um, might not have paid you this month. You know, the inflation number might have come out as expected, but guess what? We get about you know ten pieces of vital, vital economic data every month, and 
And sometimes those pieces of data line up with key technicals. And when they do, okay, you get the holy confluence. You know, that, that's what it's about. When you get those holy confluence trades, that's when you can be aggressive. That's when you can afford to be aggressive. Okay. Okie dokie dokie. Alright, so let's move back. Do keep in mind, guys, we've got a pretty important central bank this week. Um, important for a number of reasons. Um, globally, the world is fixated on, uh, well, not globally, but market wise, the market's a little bit fixated on North Korea for now. Even though clearly geopolitical risk doesn't mean anything, you know, from an economic standpoint. Not until, you know, a few bombs go flying or whatever. Um, what was interesting is, you know, if you read a lot of the headline articles yesterday, you would have noted that Donald Trump uh, has told South Korea that they will provide and supply an endless amount of bombs and, you know, equipment and armory or whatever for South Korea. I mean, you know. <laughs> If anything, a bit of war might be a little bit of an economic stimulant. Um, so again, make what you want of it, but you know, shouting each other, having big explosions, and talking about banning North Korea. I mean, again, from from a, a fundamental valuation perspective, or you know, a portfolio manager valuing his portfolio on institution managing their trades. Okay, we probably need to see a little bit more of an aggressive stance. You know, maybe a, a military action taken uh, from one of the allies or you know, something along those lines. Um, what I would say, whilst it's on the top of my mind, just to keep in mind and make a note of this, the South Koreans believe the North Koreans are moving another ICBM. Okay. They've got satellites. And um, the important thing to understand is the South Koreans believe that obviously this is going to be detonated ahead of the weekend. Okay, we've got a, a celebration in the weekend. So just keep that in the back of your mind because guess what? If it hasn't exploded come Friday, you know, uh, afternoon, you, you don't want to be, you don't want to be in positions into the weekend given there's a higher probability for another launch. Okay, so just keep that in the back of your mind. Equally, you know, if uh, if you long gold, for instance, let's say you like the long technical gold. Uh, you know, I think technically wise, daily, weekly, monthly charts, gold looks extremely bullish. You know, so if you've got a long in, you know, again, it'll be a good weekend to hold on to those longs. You want to be getting out of longs, just based on that pure fundamental, because if they don't launch, right, you won't get much of a reaction. If they do launch, okay, you could find gold um, gapping up again, five, five, ten bucks come Sunday night again. So. Just factor these things in, guys. Think for yourselves. That's why I, sh that's why I share these things with you. I want you to start thinking. Okay? Um, start thinking. Okay, we're approaching a very, very key trend line. Uh, Johnny, let's come up to the charts and let's uh, talk a little bit about the stacks. Okay. I love this chart. I, I absolutely love the DAX. I think it's a, it's a fabulously scary market. Um, Keep your nerve in focus. Uh, you can do some, some magical things. So first thing to point out, gap filled, and we've taken our last week's high. Okay, so we're higher than we were at the highest point of last week, even though there's still this rhetoric of um, North Korea. And what you can see is a very, 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 very crucial daily trend line coming in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rejections in the DAX. Now, for me, if we get anywhere near that trend line in the next half hour or hour, around the 223 level area, I will be selling it. Okay. I'm not afraid to sell it there. Uh, I'm not afraid to go 10, 15, 20 ticks aside. Why? Because, one, the rhetoric is still there. Okay. North Korea is not a solved problem yet. Two, it would put the DAX almost 1% up on the day. Okay. So if you look again, this is where knowing your numbers is so crucial. Okay. Look at the bottom of this chart here. Pick it for you so you can see it nicely. What I've got here is an average range. Okay, and what you can see right now is that the average range over the last 10 days in the DAX is roughly around 135 ticks. Ding, ding, ding. That puts us 1% up on the day, or just over 1%. Okay. So, for me, if we run into that ATR over the next you know, 25 minutes, I think you'll have a fabulous short side trade. Okay, looking for again a retest of. 
that key little break point, that spurt point, those 89 and a half. Okay, so we sell 23s, we target 89 and a half, 33 ticks of reward, relatively tight stop, 10, 15 ticks. Alright guys, nothing complicated about that, no, nothing, this is the art guys, there's nothing smart to my analysis, okay, there's nothing overly intuitive, you know, I'm not, you know, making up magical thoughts here, right, I'm just applying myself, okay, I'm applying the facts, I'm using the information, I'm being observant, I know what the market's doing, okay, so I know the facts in the market and I'm just applying myself accordingly. I'm not finding the holy grail, I'm not finding the magic levels, I'm not, you know, looking on Twitter to find them. I'm merely just using intuition, using the facts, okay? These markets show you facts all day, every day. So use those facts, play on those facts, execute on those facts, okay? So let's watch that 12.23 area uh, as we start to approach. In fact, let's get some offers on just in case we do take an aggressive bit up. Okay, what well is lovely? If we come up to the charts, oh, one more second, Johnny. So if you get a weekly profile up of the DAX, okay, you'll notice that's obviously last week's high with a put. Let me get the little pink line. So we've taken out last week's high. Note the initiative today. Okay, so we've got a lot of trend factors in this market. You know, if you've done the uh, volume profiling course, first thing that comes out, note the K-tail. So we've got a K-tail today. We've got sets of singles on the break of yesterday's high, low volume area, sorry, sing sets of singles through uh, yesterday's high. We've then got another set of singles, the imprint, low volume area, okay, and now another low volume area through the, uh, through the uh, 86 area. Okay, so very, very strong trend characteristics in this uh, DAX. So again, if I see trend characteristics, I note them, guys. You're not going to see me going 30 ticks or side in this DAX. Okay, I note the trend characteristics, I acknowledge them, and I accept that I'm going counter trend here. Okay, there is a natural trend in the stacks today, but we're about to run into this little VPOC, this weekly VPOC sitting up at 1220s. Okay, it's called a naked VPOC simply because we have not traded this price for a certain number of days. Call it seven, eight, nine, ten sessions. Okay, so we're going to keep an eye on that, those 20s. We're going to try some short side trades here. Okay, Johnny, we can come back to the later for the last couple of minutes. If you have any questions. Let's shoot away now, and um, hopefully we can answer them. Okay. I'm just going to watch for your questions now, guys. So if you do have any of them, feel free to post them on the members group, and um, hopefully you can answer them. But you know, so crucial. You know, uh, I think the lessons. I mean, this, is, this is the thing. You know, I should actually start every day off with the lessons I want you to learn, and then, and then finish the day off with the lessons. So the lessons today are simple. Okay, one: apply yourself. Right, apply yourself in the right market. Apply yourself in the right time. You know, apply yourself. Your time is precious. Okay, why stare at a uh, you know, uh, a wall that's just been painted trying to dry when you can, you know, stare at the DAX that's clearly not trying to dry. Right? Stupid analogy, but you get what I'm saying. So first thing, apply yourself. Okay. Second thing, look at the facts. The most important thing is look at the facts. Third thing, just because a market doesn't do what you expect it to do, i.e. cable, okay? I would love it if it's taken those 11s, okay? Just because it hasn't stopped down and taken the stops in a rush of blood, doesn't mean it won't, okay? But equally, note what I did there. You didn't see me arguing with the pound, going, oh, it's a weak number, oh, it's short. You didn't see me getting all emotional, all, you know, wondering why, 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 okay? I understand the interpretation. I know what I'm trying to achieve. I understand what other players are trying to do, okay? That's the important thing. Know your, know your place. Right? If you're a trader, you need to know your place because you're playing in a game that's dominated by much bigger role players. So know your place. All right. That's pretty much it, guys. Okay, um, Jimmy, good morning. Thank you for your question. How do you calculate the ATR? All right. So most charting platforms will have an ATR. Okay, it's just a technical tool. What I prefer to do is 
on my chart. So if I get the DAX up. What's very nice about the market delta charts is I can add a moving average. This turquoise line on, uh, John, if you come to the charts again, sorry. This turquoise line on both the volume and on the, uh, the range is a moving average. It's nothing more than a moving average. Okay, so that moving average I just set to 10 days. So I can see that the average over the last 10 days is currently around 135 ticks. Okay. But uh, Jimmy, you should be able to get an ATR anyways. No, this is a standard technical tool. Okay. And again, it's not the holy grail, Jimmy. Um, be careful thinking it's a holy grail tool. It's not. It's just another fact. Okay. It's, it's a fact. If the DAX is doing 130 ticks on average over the last 10 days, that's a fact. Okay. I don't need to thumb suck it. I don't need to put it out on Twitter. I don't need to you know, put it into my opinion or my analysis. It's a fact. Okay. The DAX is averaging 130 ticks over the last 10 days. Fact. So if it does 130 ticks by 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning when North Korea is still a problem, it's still a fact. Okay. And that fact could provide me with an opportunity. And on its own, it's not an opportunity. But together with other information, it adds, adds to the scale or to the confluence of the opportunity. OK. Uh, Johnny, we can finish off on the ladders. We've got another minute or two to go. All right, guys. Um, all very quiet this morning. So. That's where you. That's you. That, that's it. That's the session. That's the forty-five minutes. You know. I. I hope I've got your attention. I think it's so important if you watch these streams weekly. All right. Don't fixate on what I'm doing. Don't fixate on on my execution. Sometimes I execute well, and you're gonna go, oh, he made so much money. And sometimes I'm gonna execute pretty shit. Okay. Don't fixate on my execution. Fixate on 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 what I'm telling you. Okay. Because my theory is a hell of a lot better than 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 my practical sometimes. Okay, but I spend every day making sure that my practical application gets a lot better. Right, and that's the key. Okay. You know, there's, there's a wonderful expression, you know, you look at, you look at professional sportsmen. You know, why, I mean, you look at Jose Mourinho, one of, the, one of the most highly regarded football coaches in the world, and you wonder, you know, could this guy have been a great footballer? You know? Remember, the, the greatest teachers are the ones that know the theory, they know the application, they know how to resolve certain issues. Okay. I'm just one of those lucky few that, yeah, okay, maybe I can understand and, and hopefully convey message as well, but I also trade, right? So I know day in, day out, I have to work on my execution. So when you watch these streams, don't worry about my execution, worry about the understanding, the interpretation, and the analysis. Okay, that's a wrap up, guys. Um, any feedback? Obviously, do post in the members uh, group. And uh, yeah, good luck for the rest of the session. All right, remember ECB Thursday, quite a big day. And, uh, welcome back to the summer month. Set those goals. And uh, make sure every day you strive to be a little bit better. All right, guys. Catch up later.